Falcons got ten and a quarter inch rotors. This Toyota Highlander has got almost 13 inch rotors. So what I did, I'm replacing the struts on the wagon, but uh, I wanted to see if this wheel would fit around the caliper, which it looks like it clears. It's hard to see, but there's definitely a gap there. And whether everything else clears. So, Something's rubbing, and I think it's just the backing plate is rubbing. But this 13 inch rotor fits in this wheel with this hub. So I might try something here in the future. All right, what's up, guys? So this is a Ford Falcon front hub and spindle. So what I'm going to do is knock that upper control arm off, and then I'm going to undo the hub bearing part pull the hub off and then we're going to beat the studs at it and get the drum off of the hub all right so here's the raw spindle raw spindle and then you have this flat surface area where you can hang a bracket that would come out here somewhere which didn't capture the caliper and caliper bracket and then the hub the idea is the hub will get turned down i just double checked the measurement of this diameter is like uh, 61.7 millimeters where the Toyota Highlander uh, same point here for the rotor to fit over this is 62 so it should slide right over this the only thing I do is make sure this outer diameter is cut down which I have access to some really nice leaves at work and I should be able to pull up probably a good solid eighth inch out of this on each side so quarter inch smaller diameter all together and then that rotor should just fit right over the top and then I can mock all this up here hang a caliper on it and figure out if this surface area is on the same plane as the caliper bracket and I can design up and have something cut uh, from send cut send and bolt all this together to help hold the caliper in place. It's pretty much identical to what I already have on the car. On the car there's a bracket that goes over this that bolts here that captures the GM metric caliper for the little 10 and a quarter inch rotors that I have that go over a hub that also has to get cut down anyways, but we'll see. All right, so this one just came in. This should be one of three packages. There should be two sets of parts in here. So it should be um, two brake lines and a hardware kit. If I can get this bag of one handed. Yeah, there we go. Eh. Damn. Sweet. So this should be two feet long. This is your standard uh, inverted flare 3 16 um, brake line. So 3 8 by 24. Two of those with the 10 mil banjo bolt. And then hardware clips and bolts. So one set of these is a Seven sixteenths and the other is a ten mil. So seven sixteenths is the big ones, ten mil is the small ones. All right, another box came in. Let's see what's in this one. I think this might be the calipers. Yep, calipers. Two smaller boxes. Cool. All right. All right, calipers. Let's get this out. Bam. Oh. Yep. Parts. Yeah, one thought I had was here. Hold on. I'm talking to myself. Oh. <laughs> All right, caliper. Boy, these are big. Grab the bag. Sweet. Casting looks a little rough, but it's okay. So now I just need bolts. So this is what I needed so I could finish modeling up what this was gonna look like. But this is cool to have. So yeah, so the rotor fits in here. Caliper bracket off the spindle will go to the back. So I just I need this to know this distance and how big of a radius this needs to be. I can start modeling that and then knowing the distance, I can assume the rotor is going to be so this surface here is probably what would that be six and a half, which would be 13. 
so probably six and five eighths from the center of the spindle is where this would need to be. So I could probably start swagging that up and measure this distance here. Make sure I know where the rotor is going to fit, sit centered. And brake pads aren't showing up until... Well, actually, it doesn't matter because this whole thing floats. When, once brake pads show up, I'll see what distances I got, but yeah. All right, so here's SolidWorks model I put together. This is the R Toyota Highlander rotor. I pulled these dimensions off of AutoZone. Um, I double checked them with the hardware that I got in the mail and I made some adjustments so now it's correct. You also have the the Falcon hub under here which also protrudes out the front and then the uh, calipers that showed up in the mail. I only need this bracket uh, because it is what holds the pads in place and then in result also holds the uh, caliper in place. So now here's the bracket that I designed to then hold all this together. So there's some washers that have to get placed on the back side of the spindle uh, to index everything correctly. And then there's also a 3 8 thick washer that goes here, more like a spacer, that then a bolt will go through to grab the caliper. So that's the intent there with all of this. So the reason I'm doing it on the back side is if you rotate this around, uh, this thickness or this surface here uh, is slightly inset than this surface here so I didn't want to make some big bracket that goes around and then have to add material and weld to it I'm just trying to make this all out of one piece and so I'm gonna give this a try coming from the back side All right, so quite a bit of finagling. Finally got it together. So turn the back, or turn the hub down enough for it to fit inside of the rotor. Reassembled it all on the spindle. There we go. Uh, this thing's big, heavy. Caliper bracket over there is all torn apart. So I'm gonna have to figure out, do some double checking on some distances and make sure all that looks correct. Alrighty, so the Syncut Send package came in. This is what we got. So brackets, uh, six looks like they cut out seven spacers. There should be ten of these spacers. So I'll go ahead and get these cut out and start swapping parts around and see what we got. Alright, so here's the back side of the spindle with the bracket on there. So I don't know if you can tell with the light but there's a spacer that goes between the back of the spindle flange and the bracket so that's there to raise the bracket off of the casting because i've noticed not all of these are cut the same i think they machine this depth they machine the depth from the back even though the casting may be different sizes so that tries to get it up and off there plus there's a spacing alignment issue I'll show you next alright so caliper brackets on um, looking straight down looks like I got the, the caliper bracket centered on the rotor pretty good give or take I like that you can see, oop, I'll turn this around to the light. You can see the spacer, one of these guys. Goes in between the caliper bracket and the other caliper bracket. But I like that. So we're gonna put we're gonna go ahead and load a caliper up with pads and shove it on here and see where we're at. 
All right, so here it is loaded. I'm in my own shadow. Uh, everything looks pretty good. The pads are right up to the outer edge of the rotor like they're supposed to be. Uh, matches the Toyota setup over there. Pretty good. So, yeah, I think this is going to work. All these depths seem to be right. Everything else looks pretty lined up. Uh, I'm going to have slightly different nut and hardware for these. They're not just going to be a, a grade 5 nut. I actually have some hardened uh, grade 8s that are going to go in there. And uh, yeah, this yeah, this looks like this is just going to work. So really I just need to turn down the... Check the uh, diameter of some things. And see what happens. Looks like this is going to work. All right, so this side's test fitted. Um, I don't have the pads in it yet. I wanted to make sure I got the rotor. Man, it's close. Make sure I got the rotor centered in the bracket, which looks like I did. I had to shim the back a little bit. I don't know if you can see. Um, so the washers go up under here, and there's big washers here, but um, I'm, I'm going to redo this again and have the bracket come off the front. But it, So it's going to be a two-part bracket that gets welded together, and then there'll probably be a spacer in between here and the uh, hub to get the rotor in the right spot. But we're going to go ahead and proceed with this for right now. Um, yeah. I might try throwing the wheel up on here in a second after I put some pads in it and stuff. So I haven't disconnected the old stuff yet. Uh, in case this isn't going to work, I'm going to do the other side first. And once I'm convinced that this is going to work and everything's going to spin, I'll button everything up. And then I'll uh, put the brake hoses together over here and uh, swap it around when I'm ready to do that. All right, so here we go. So here's the back side with the rim on. Uh, everything's pretty close, but you can kind of get an idea for the spacing, maybe, if the light's just right. There we go. It's pretty close, but it looks like it's working. I'm going to go around to the tear the other side apart. I still have to turn the hub down on the other side. And then... Um, once I verify all this is going to work, I'll go ahead and button all the hubs back up and get all the brake lines ran over and get all that stuff ready to go. All right, so we've got these all back together. So this is size comparison, a little 10 and a quarter to a 12.9. So obviously that doesn't go on there, but looks like it's going to work. I uh, got the brake line all sorted out. Had the uh, 10 year old out here bleeding the brakes for me, pumping on the pedal, holding, and uh, feels pretty good. So, other side's already ready to go, also. So, next, gonna be throwing the wheels on and driving around. It looks like spacing and everything looked pretty good. Uh, only had to shim one side over here. I had a, a 40,000th washer on the back side of one of the three, three eighths bolts, and that got the uh, caliper bracket. This guy. Uh, centered on the rotor and uh, So yeah, looks like it's working. I'm gonna put it together and slow roll around the block. See if I can get to work tomorrow All right, so cars back on the ground It's pretty ridiculous uh, It's sitting all funny because it was all jacked up, but I'm gonna slow roll around the neighborhood and see how this works. All right, so quick uh, drive around the block. Worked out pretty good. Um, stops well. Takes a lot less pedal pressure, which is kind of what I figured. Uh, if you look at the metric, geometric piston diameter, two and a quarter inch, give or take. These are 1.73, but there's two of them. So if you do the math, uh, the same surface area, give or take, about a quarter of a square inch difference, maybe. But um, I think because the rotor's larger, you have a larger radius, a larger lever to slow the wheel down. And that seems to be what's going on. So yeah, um, everything looks good. All right, what's up? So drove the car to work today. It did well. Uh, brakes are a little bit lighter on the pedal. 
and it uh, seems to stop a little bit better. A couple, I won't say panic stops, but I was just kind of testing them out last night and then on the work, way to work this morning, uh, the car definitely slows down better than it did uh, before. It was, you had to kind of lean on it pretty good to get it to stop. Uh, could just be a master cylinder bore diameter needs to change possibly. I don't know. Uh, between all of the, the physics and the diameters and surface areas and PSI that you can push into the system to get the brakes to to clamp on the rotor as hard as you need. But it seems to be doing well. I mean, it works good for a Toyota. Should work fine for a Falcon. So, uh, if you're seeing this, you made it through 15 minutes of video to see how this all kind of went together. So, thanks for watching.